Hey, it's Darnell with D Grill. Got myself a 6.32 pound leg of lamb here. You can see this is a uh, fresh from Costco, the Kirkland Signature brand of boneless leg of lamb. 100% uh, premium Australian lamb. So this comes to us all the way from Australia for this cook. And uh, <clears throat> basically I'm going to be cooking this on the rotisserie of my Weber Genesis 2 E310 propane gas grill. So anytime you want to rotisserie a leg of lamb on your uh, your grill, gas grill, you can uh, use this recipe here. So I'm going to show you the ingredients that I'm using for this leg of lamb. Then I'm going to just uh, go get the grill started up and then we'll come back and start preparing it. But I just want to show you the ingredients while I'm here. The ingredients for this cook to start, and this is just to start, are going to be one cup of extra virgin olive oil, uh, the juice of one lemon, or if you just you're just using lemon juice, use uh, one and a half ounces of lemon juice. Got one teaspoon of thyme here. I've got some garlic. Now, if you have whole garlic cloves, you can use those, or if you have the uh, minced type of garlic, that's just what I had on hand, so I'm using that. Use about eight to ten. Uh, garlic cloves or if you're using the minced garlic you need to use about uh, four to five teaspoons. I've got some salt and I've got some freshly cracked black pepper off the grinder. I didn't uh, measure that but I'll show you that much will be about how much I need. <laughs> um, I'm going to take you out to the grill now real quick. We'll get that started up. Alright so we're out here at the grill. Got the rotisserie set up here. Basically, um, got my drip there. Got the iGrill 3 Ambient Probe only being used for the sake of knowing if I run out of propane or something. The temperature off that within that position with me having to keep the warming rack down won't be uh, accurate at all with it facing uh, like it is. But it's just to let me know if I run out of propane or something of that nature. But gonna go ahead and get the grill nice and warmed up. So, starting the first. First burner there. Still lighting up good after its one year anniversary light up. Got all three burners going. We'll close that up. Gonna go inside and we'll start getting this uh, leg of lamb together. Okay, to get going with this leg of lamb, I got it out of the cryo bag. Uh, took some paper towels, wiped it all off uh, real good so we can get everything put on it. Um, to start, I'm gonna take that oil that I have. I'm going to pour that into this bowl here. And I'm going to take that lemon juice, get that in there. I'm going to take that thyme. It's about time for the thyme to go into the mix. Then I'm going to Try and get those to work together somewhat. Mix them up there. Okay. I'm going to get my salt and my pepper and such all over here. And my garlic over here. Because I'm going to try and, uh, and try and maybe manipulate it with one hand. I'll, I'll probably just do it over here. That'll be That'll actually be easier having it all over here. I'll use this hand for the touching of the meat and this other hand to try and stay clean. <clears throat> so I could do this out at the grill but I guess I'm going to do it here because I've got to make some small slits in the uh, leg of lamb here to try and get the garlic in some slits here. Now this leg of lamb does have a uh, bag, well not a bag, a uh, the string covering it, so I don't want to disturb that personally. You know, some people like to get up under that string with some of their seasonings and such, and that's something you can do if you want to take the bag off, I mean the string off, put it back on later. I'd rather not uh, risk messing it up myself. Also with the boneless leg of lamb, if you want, you can make yourself a stuffing and, you know, stuff it. 
when you, before you cook it, you know. That would be nice too. So I'm just mixing my mixture on here real nice and good. Real generously. Because this is not the base I'm going to be using while it's spinning on the rotisserie. This is just uh, what I'm going to be using and having it cook with the first hour. The first hour this is going to cook in. And then uh, after the first hour of cooking, I got another base I'm going to be making up later in this video. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. If you have not subscribed, now's a good moment to uh, go and subscribe. So uh, <coughs> just getting this all over here. I don't know if I'll exhaust the entire mixture, but I'm just going to. Let's make sure it's all in there real nice and good. I don't want to have any of it miss this juiciness. Alright. That's good. Let's, let's get some more in, get some in the cavity there. That looks good. So uh, now I'm going to just try and get some, get a knife and get some small slits in some spots. I'm going to stick some of this garlic into the open cavity. Some of it I'm just going to make some small slits and try and just uh, maybe just poke some spots and stick some pieces of garlic in them. So I just get some parts open here. Just maybe make like a small line there across the across part of it. And if you want to take the bag off, you know, it'd probably be easier to take the bag off at this point and just make your slits if you want to do that. I guess I'm just being extra cautious. I don't want to take the bag off and then regret it later, if you know what I mean. You do what you uh, what you like to do. I don't want to have to run back to get another because I messed up something. I guess I ended up touching the lamb with the hand that was supposed to be clean, trying to keep it steady. That's okay. I'll have to just pop the glove off when I use the salt and pepper shakers. You know, these open cavities here make some good openings to stick some garlic in just because it's boneless. If you had a bone in and you didn't have some open cavities to stick anything in, then you'd have to make the cuts. Or make more cuts, I should say. Just get that garlic in there nice and good. Those open cavities are just like begging for some, so stick some in there. And if you made a stuffing for your leg lamb, you would definitely need to crack it open, I mean crack, take off this uh, string and uh, get it open and get that stuffing in there. Let's, uh, let's make a little slit on the back here. See if I can get some bits of garlic in the back. And like I said, if you're buying the ingredients for this, get the whole cloves and, you know, just pop about four or five in different spots. But I've just got a bunch of minced, minced garlic sitting around, so it's best when you're cooking, use what you have before you uh, go out acquiring more stuff. Don't uh, let what you already have on hand go to waste because you want to try and 
get something of the same thing in a different form. So salt and pepper. Put this salt on top. Get salt and pepper to taste. Ooh. A little too much salt on that one part, but just rub it in. As I always say, I'm that kid who didn't get the high grades in art class, so I don't, uh, I'm sure you'll probably do the seasoning better than I'm doing it, <laughs> as far as the visual appeal. stronger uh, bite and aroma to it so it's good for cooking in I mean when you're doing your meal and shake on pepper you probably just use the table pepper unless the already uh, chopped up pe pepper unless you want it real strong the fresh cracked is it's got that extra bite to it this already. Now I'm going to get this uh, hooked up on the rotisserie. When I bring you back I'll be taking you out to the grill to put this onto the rotisserie and get it going. Going to be cooking at 275 degrees. Going to be cooking for about uh, 20 minutes per pound and I'll give you the rest of the uh, instructions as we move along here. Alright. Here's our uh Start the show. Stick it on the rotisserie. And, uh, see if we got it right the first time. Close it up. Well, actually, I'll leave it open while I check that it starts. And we got it right the first time. How about that? Um, gonna close this up. Try and play with the dials. Keep that temp around the 275 range. Um, basically, gonna let this cook as is for about an hour. So uh, let me check my time. It's uh, almost 6.15 here in my time zone at the moment. So I'm uh, going to keep playing with these dials. Oh man, my rotisserie. Okay, All right. The rotisserie thing, I didn't have it, when I lifted it up to put the rod in, I didn't have it securely on the holder here, but we're all good now. So, as I was saying, I'm going to basically be playing with the dials to keep it around 275. I'm going to try having the two ends on a quarter for the moment, or a little more than a quarter for the moment. Indirect heat, no middle, no middle heat at the moment. Uh, I'm not going to be using that middle dial at all. And it uh, should be a lot easier. You know, a lot of times on rotisserie cooks, I cook two things. It should be easier with one just having the... Uh, the spikes in both sides of the meat should hold it in place real good. But basically one hour then I'm going to start basting every 30 minutes and this cook should take roughly two hours at 20 minutes per pound and uh, I'm going to give you the weather report for the moment. Let's see here. The weather in our area is currently mostly cloudy 47 degrees Fahrenheit real feel is 35 degrees Fahrenheit Humidity is 47%. Wind speed is like 21 miles an hour. Sometimes it's going between 15 and 21 miles an hour wind gusts. Pretty windy day. But uh, I'm going to take you inside. I'm going to start working on the base for this uh, leg of lamb. And we'll get that together. Come out after it's been rotisserie in for an hour. Have a look at it. Start putting on the base every 30 minutes. And for doneness, 
you um, basically cook till if you want a medium rare you do 145 degrees if you want a medium well or not medium well but medium you do uh, 160 degrees it's kind of like medium well it's medium if you want well done like totally well done 170 degrees since I don't do leg of lamb every day I'm going to take it to medium. I'm going to take this to 160 degrees cooking temp instead of 170. Like I, you know, with steaks I always cook them, you know, really well done. But I'm going to do this to 160. So let's go inside and make that base. All right, so to get started with our base, the ingredients are one stick of butter, half of a cup of oil, I got extra virgin olive oil, one ounce of brown sugar, one ounce of soy sauce, and I've got one, about one tablespoon of cracked black pepper here. So basically I'm just going to heat it up, mix them all together, and when I bring you back I'll be out there at the lamb basting. Alright, so we're one hour in and I've been keeping the temp between 275 to 300. Um, and we'll take a look here now. And that's our leg of lamb after one hour. At this rate we're probably going to be going longer than uh, two hours I suspect. But I'm going to baste it every couple minutes and I'll start checking temp. I'm going to start basting every 30 minutes and I'm going to check temp uh, maybe after two hours and uh, or maybe longer depending on how it looks. Get a coat of this all over it. And I'm going to close it back up, save some base for later. Come back in about another, I'll probably leave that for another hour, the way it looks. I'm going to leave it for another hour and then come baste it again and then uh, just keep an eye on it. So I'll bring you back in about another hour. Alright, so it's been about two hours. I'm going to check the temp and actually since I've checked the temps out again for what a well done leg of lamb is, it's well done at 155. Um, just uh, looking at it on my eye grill again, for a leg of lamb that's rolled like this one, it's uh, 120 for rare, 130 for medium rare, 140 for medium. 150 for medium well and 155 for well done. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and push it to 155 for the well doneness since it's uh, well done at 155. The reference I was using earlier wasn't uh, very good or reliable for the doneness. Um, so here we go. That's two hours. I'm going to stop the rotisserie. I'm going to do a check in here of the pimp. Now uh, I'm going to close it while it's uh, reading temp. I don't want it to get too cold there. I'll show you what iGrill is saying. It's at 115. It's still rising. So we'll give that a moment to rise. I'm going to base that I don't believe it's going to hit uh, 155 at this point but probably will in like maybe the next 30 40 minutes or so but it looks like we're topping out in the 120 ish range so I'm gonna baste I'm gonna give it uh, about mm, about 40 minutes come back take a look at it again so uh, let's do that now <coughs> I'm going to leave a probe in there for convenience sake. Well, actually I need to take it out because I've got to get this thing spinning again to do the actual basting. I have to just heat up my baste a little bit and mix it up to it again. I kind of wish there were variable speeds on this rotisserie so that I could you know, have a basting speed where it would speed, uh, spin around a little slower than it does at cooking speed, you know. It'd be nice if they're, they're going to make a rotisserie that has uh, two speed, one for basting 
and one for actual cooking. That'd be nice. And that crackle is that uh, basic the bottom there. But this ram, this lamb is looking good. Let's get some regular lamb for a little while. It's gonna take a little longer than two hours since I guess my temp being between 275 and 300. It's gonna take more than 20 minutes a pound. But that's okay. I'm going to put on a healthy, heavy dose of my base this time since this might be the last run of the base. Got just a little base left. I'm just gonna kind of exhaust it and drill it on. And I think next time we come out here, it'll be to remove and do taste testing and such. All right, so close that up. Get in about another 40 minutes. Come back and see if we're at uh, 155. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. It's nighttime, but I think we'll be all right. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes since the last check, but kind of accounting for the time that was taken between basting and whatnot. It's been about three hours total cooking here, so let's uh, open it up and take a look and do a uh, temperature test here. Get my uh, phone out here. Close it up while I'm testing the temp. 130, 140s, 143, 144. It's looking good. Looking real good. 147. Uh, it's looking 48. I think I'm going to pull it. I don't want to overcook it, you know. It's about 148. And so that's uh, nearly well done, 149. Yeah, I don't want to overdo it on the lamb, so I'm going to put this at 149. This is kind of like it, uh, about the medium well done. So I'm going to just take it there, you know, take my win at this point and not try and overdo it. So 150 is good after about three hours. Um, it was about 275 to 300 right now. The dial's reading 300. I think it was reading 300 for most of the cook early on i had to adjust the dials a bit because things went down on me a little bit and then it uh, came back up to about 300 and so i just kind of left it right about there but 275 300 about three hours get you about the medium well done um you saw rare at about two hours so i'm going to get this off take it in and we'll do the plating and the taste testing all right, so here's our completed leg of lamb, now indoors and safe. Going to just uh, try and get some of the strings cut from up under here. Seeing the meat there, get some more of this netting out of the way. But that netting really, really was good. Really was good. It's perfect for rotisserie cooking, isn't it? The net that it came in didn't have to twine. Use any twine. All right. There you can see kind of in the meat there that it's, uh, it's got some pink there, but it's uh, well cooked. It's well cooked, so turned out well. I'm just going to slice a slice off the top here. I want to taste that baste. That's what I'm doing. Uh, big slice off the top here. Alright, there you have it. 
I didn't cook till fully well done, but I think that's pretty good there. So just going to <coughs> set it down here on my plate. I'm just going to cut some slices for taste testing. It's very tender. Just a little strand of meat caught there. But it's cut and tender. Just a little stuck on the end there. Maybe a piece of fat or something. Alright. Well, that's good for our taste test. I'm gonna get the camera adjusted and then we'll do our taste testing. Alright. Leg of lamb off the Weber Genesis 2E310 Propane Gas Grill Rotisserie. Just want to give you another look at the meat there. I'll taste test with this one to start. Now, I was chewing there, the meat's not tough, it was just a piece of, uh, maybe some of the fat in there, but very tender, very moist and tender, is how I describe it. Tastes very good, very moist and tender, and definitely get yourself a rotisserie, give this a try, there'll be referral links below if you want to get any of the uh, stuff that I used in this cook, and uh, if you liked the video, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed, and good eating.